us here this evening. I am Faye Ellington. Let me thank you for joining us for the NDTC chat live. You're accustomed to joining us live on Instagram, but we've switched it up today as we have a very large family gathering to talk about a very special man, our beloved Barry Moncrief, who we affectionately call Uncle Barry. Now, last week, we had a very engaging and wonderful informative conversation founding years with two stalwarts, Bert Rose and Barbara Requa, and that was hosted by Cheryl Ryman. And today we're here to talk about another stalwart, Barry Moncrief or Uncle Barry. Now, to join me for this discussion, this reflection on the man we all know and love so dearly are some very, very special people who either danced and traveled with him or who grew up under his care. They are going to share why Uncle Barry, why Barry Moncrief meant so much to them and give us an insight into the behind the scenes person that he was. His niece and nephew are here. Judy Benjamin is his niece and joining us all the way from Abu Dhabi at almost three o'clock in the morning is Martin Sutherland. Of course, his NDTC family is here. Hilary Phillips, NDTC Deputy Chair. Sandra Phillips, Elaine Grant and Henry Miller. NDTC musician and master drummer. Uncle Barry was also a very dear friend of mine and I pause because um, very special in so many ways. He dressed me for many occasions because you know he was quite a designer and he collaborated with his sister Pam and they, they had all these fabulous fashion shows. I think perhaps at this point I should tell you that I spoke with his three sisters and they all had the same thing to say about their brother. They said he was kind to a fault. But Pam, the designing, right? He would design and she would create the beautiful garments and then they would take over these fashion shows that those of us who experienced them would never ever forget. And she said, Lord, him could I love a curry goat? Mm-hmm. Curry goat, curry goat, curry goat. So let's bear that in mind. So it was uh, fantastic that we're able to get everybody together to do all of this. If you're just joining, I am Faye Ellington, and I want to thank you all for joining us. Now, we've been talking about Barry Moncrief, Uncle Barry, until about 5.45. And in the last 15 minutes, we'll take your questions, your comments. So yes, you can put them in the chat and we will deal with them at that time. Thanks again for joining. If you have to leave this conversation, it will be uploaded to the NDTC YouTube channel so you won't miss it. And if you, if, if you uh, want to tell others about it who may not be able to watch it just now, please tell them that it will be there on the YouTube NDTC channel. Well, we hope everybody hearty and that we can get going. We're going to speak to each family member one at a time, starting with Judy and Martin, and then we'll talk to members of the NDTC family. So just a gentle reminder. Please, you can participate by commenting and asking questions, but we'll take that in the last 15 minutes and we will begin the conversation to shed some light on who this Uncle Barry was. So Martin, all the way from Abu Dhabi, what is your favorite memory about your uncle, your real uncle, your biological uncle, Uncle Barry? Hi everyone, good, uh, I, I'll say good morning because it's just after 3 a.m. Um, there, there are lots of good memories. You mentioned his love of curry goat. Um, everybody knows about his dry humor, those who have met him. And in the recent past, I've started cooking more. Being in Abu Dhabi away from Jamaica, you have to try and, you know, learn to make the things that used to be made for you when you were home. So I'd arrive in Jamaica, and Uncle Barry said, oh, how are you doing, and so on, and hug, and so on. And the next question would be, when you're making the pork, you bring <laughs> And that, 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 that's, that was the essence of Uncle Barry, not beating around the bush, always straight to the point. In your mind, what do you think made him so special? We know he was an exceptional dancer with uh, limbs that any dancer would just die for. But in your mind, what made him so special? I, he was a giver of everything. He gave of himself. He gave of things that he had. Um, Anyone that knows him will know that if, he, if you needed help and he could, he would help you. If you needed something and he could give it to you, he would give you his last cent. Um, for example, his car. There was always somebody else driving his car because he always lent it out. Didn't, never thought of even asking for gas. Uh, when you think of him, you think of his sense of fashion, his sense of style. But his wardrobe was actually quite small. Because I remember as a teenager growing up, I was a bit smaller than he was, but Miami Vice was a thing. So you had these massive shoulder pads 
And I had about three or four Miami Vice style jackets I got from him, I had shoes I got from him. You went there and if it was in the closet and you said, Uncle Barry, I like that shirt, you would take it now. And he would give of himself as well as everything he had. And I think that's what made him special that he was so giving. Giving, Martin. giving, no fault. And everybody speaks about his kindness. Did you ever hear him raise his eyes at any time? And if so, what was the occasion? Yes. The only time I've heard him raise his voice and it wasn't directed at me and it was always in jest. You'd go to the school of dance to pick up, say, Judy or Claudia or both from their classes, usually with Tony Wilson. Uncle Barry may have been teaching a class elsewhere. And the only time he raised his voice was when he was telling somebody that they were doing something wrong. And it was usually something very dry. You know, you think we have plant yam or whatever the comment was, and nobody was offended. He had that knack of saying humorous, things that said in a bad, different person could have been offensive, but it always came across as good natured from him, always. As his nephew, can you recall any incident in which you may have landed in trouble with him? I have an incident that I don't know if anyone knows about. It was at one of his birthday parties up at Windsor, Great House at Cayman Estate, where my grandparents, his parents used to live. And I don't know how old I was, but I was quite young. And I went to the bar to pour myself a cup of, of fruit punch. Now I started pouring myself a glass of rum punch. I had no idea that there was a difference at my age. So he looked at me and he says, you drink rum punch? I said, of course, having no idea there was any difference. And I took a sip and he says, how is it? And I said, oh, it's, it's lovely, even though it really tasted pretty bad. I drank some of it. And I went to bed, and I've never heard anything further. So I'm sure he kept it to himself. I never told a soul. Well, your dad and your mom, clearly if he told them, they also kept the secret, but I suspect yeah. he didn't tell them. Just before we uh, bring your sister in, have you ever, rather, let me rephrase this. Did you ever do, go to dance classes, Martin? I never. And in hindsight, I wish I did, because there are a few Let's call them phobias I have in life. Me, lizards, frogs, we don't get along very well. Lizard. I have to get them out of the room if I was there. And I probably am half as bad with dancing. I have the, the stereotypical two left feet or worse. I think he got all the talent. He gave Judy some, and Norma got some, but somehow none came in my direction. So I really wish that I had. Thank you, Martin. We're not going to let you go, but we're going to thank you for the time being. You mentioned Auntie Norma, and let me just say, I spoke with Auntie Norma, Norma Hessick in um, uh, Florida today, and she says uh, he was loved by everybody. He was very, very kind. Again, that is a refrain, very kind. Would you give, you know, she says he will give you the shirt off his back, but mm -hmm. she also would tell me something because there were four girls, one predeceased the rest of them, and, and, and your Uncle Barry and Barry Moncrief. And he used to dress up in sheet and chase them around the house and, uh, as a doppy. <laughs> he was having lots of fun as a child. But there you go. So Judy, you've heard Martin talk that maybe he should have contemplated dancing, but you went to dance. Um, was, it your, was it your Uncle Barry who influenced you to dance? I believe so. I think at that time, um, I was about three, so it was a very common extracurricular activities for girls, you know, so we all went. Um, but I think in the beginning, I would, it was just dance, you know, you're going to have a good time and you make friends and you're hanging out and so. But as we got older and you understood more about the art, and I was able to, you know, people are saying, oh, buy a mom creep and getting excited. And I was like, what are you getting excited over? It's just not married. So I wasn't able to appreciate the artist until I was in my teens, you know? Can you remember the first time it dawned on you that this man that people were, ah, oh, my God, did you see him last night in the performance, that, he, that this was your uncle and you could separate uncle from this exquisite performer? I think it happened when I realized that he was traveling to dance with the company. So they went to Russia and to Germany and some countries. But I mean, when they went to Russia, it was like Russia, because that was like, a place that you only heard about. So I think that when they started to, to travel, and then I realized that he was the principal, 
and then he was, the, you go to watch and he's always the lead. And I'm like, wow. And then people, the expectation is that, do you have the monkey foot, you have the monkey leg, what you have, you know, in the class. So then you start to realize just how important it is and, and the roles that he, what he brought to the roles, you know, it was, it was something, it was you, really something. So you did dance, but you also stayed in the performing arts in another uh, role, which is you were an usher for the NDTC for a while. Am I correct? You are correct. It was... What? Go ahead. No, I was saying that in our, like maybe from about 14, that age till maybe about 16, 17, um, we would, we would usher a group of us. So we were at every show, every night, all the time. So hear this now. What are the dances that you can remember seeing Uncle Barry in? Okay, I remember, of course, the crossing. You know, we would run down and sit in the front row. So you got everything, you know? So I remember the crossing, especially the, that horse section. I remember Court of Ja because he was a Rastafari, head tie up in turban, and I was like, really? You know, it was so, at that time, the Rastafarian movement was just coming to life, you know? So that was something, and I cannot forget, um, I think it was Islands with that long red fabric. Now, I remember when my grandmother was putting that fabric together at home, um, she was saying, how is Barry going to dance with this long, hell of a piece of cloth, you know? Because it was yards and yards. So I remember being a little bit nervous the first time I was going to see it, you know? And then when he kind of did it, I was, when he moved with it, I mean, the fabric moved, I was just like, wow, you know? So, I mean, that was a very significant visual for me with the white, with the, that white shirt with the pants and that red fabric. So I remember that quite clearly. So Martin shared with us this uh, rum drinking, not really rum, rum punch, okay? Do you have any memories, anything that you shared with your uncle Barry? And this is uh, uh, Judy Benjamin, his niece, if you're just joining, Barry Moncrief's niece. Do you have any memories, anything you confided in him in that you know he just stayed there? You don't have to tell us what it is necessarily, but yeah, he was special and you could talk to him? He would, he would. I you know, he would always say his piece, especially when we started dating, you know? So he gave some kind of stern, good advice. Who is that? What does that person look like? What him have on? What him do? You know, so we got, we got that from him. We did. What would you say, before I thank you for the time being, what would you say was his most cherished quality or qualities? I believe that... Uncle Barry was, he accepted people for who they presented themselves to be. So um, our family, we take in people. And I think he was a big part of that. So he meets somebody, he gets to know them and they become a part of our family. A lot of the people on this street are a part of our family, you know? And I think that, yes, kind and helpful, but when you look at the essence of accepting people for who they are, always willing to assist somebody and, and just bringing them in, you know, just bringing them into our pool. I think that was significant, not a lot of people are like that. Let me just use this uh, opportunity to say that one such person was Kingsley Ragashanti Stewart. Yes. And we, we heard him speak at that uh, Thanksgiving yes. event yes. and, you know, and he's, he's spoken about it several times. Yes. But, Thank you so much. No, of course, you know you have to stay with us for the entire one hour, you know? Thank you so much that if you're just joining us, we're talking about Barry Moncrief, popularly called Uncle Barry. Uh, under normal circumstances, the National Dance Theatre Company would be having their season of dance at this time, and perhaps I would be down at the theatre for a performance. Just so, I just love them, okay? All right, fine. But now I want to introduce you to Elaine, Elaine Grant. No, Elaine, you dance with Uncle Barry? You were a good friend. You just talk to me. Barry Moncrief is known for many good qualities. Is there one thing that you can tell us about Uncle Barry that no one else has said at this point? I don't think so. <laughs> Ali? I'm here. Yes, no, there's nothing else that you can state. 
Turn on back your mic, Elaine. Turn your mic on. I think you inadvertently turned it off. It was on all along. Just, just click it back on for me, please. Okay. Just yes, on I, now. It's on now. Yeah, I, no, I don't think there's anything that anyone has said that um, I... All right, let me, let me bring something else into the picture. You've been on tours with Barry Moncrief. Oh, yeah. Which, which, what were your favorite memories of tours, the concerts you've been to and performances with him? Well, the truth is I never really lined with Barry on tour very much in the early days. I lined with, you know, my peers. But the second tour to England is particularly memorable because after everybody left, Mark Barry and I got to hang out at Jackie Guy's house for a couple of days. And, and which mark is up. this? Which mark are you referring to? Mark Finn. Mark, mark Finn. Finn, Barry and I stayed over with Jackie Guy for about three days. Went to Brixton. I got my first um, double decker bus ride. And best of all, Jackie Guy made the most amazing pumpkin soup laced with some garlic. And when I came back home, it became part of the old church, what am I cooking and preparing and eating love? But whatever could go into the pumpkin soup with garlic, but those two things were all <laughs> Now, you, li you lived next door to Barry Moncree for some time. How did he create this family environment that I know he had? NDTC family and wider biological family and everything just seemed to morph into one. Say, I've lived next door to Barry Moncree since the 80s. Because he took me in when I was could, when I didn't want to go back home to my father, um, and I didn't have anywhere to go. He took me in from very early. When he went to England, he left me to take care of his apartment. And then he came back and I got to buy this space at Old Church. And remember too, that the Sutherlands lived across the street. So yes, I became part of the Sutherland family. I have to say, first of all, I wanted to say thank you to Marlon for doing this whole thing. But most of all, before I started talking about Barry, I wanted to say how blessed and privileged I recognize that I am because of the NDTC. And NDTC just meant NDTC School of Dance, Old Church. I mean, that's been my life. I, you know, I just, and Barry was like the most special, special, special human being. He's I my big brother. Yes, he was my yes. big brother. <laughs> <laughs> I want, I, I, what is one of the funniest moments you can recall with Barry I'm not great with telling stories, you know. You're a storyteller par, rock, okay? Rock <laughs> no, after, right? You must have experienced something that was funny. You don't have to tell it as a story, but just, just share the occasion with us. If there was a funny moment or, I mean, he taught at the School of Dance. Um, with well, you, you know, what, what was that like? Well, it was Miss Isis' kitchen. <laughs> What's for lunch? <laughs> That's him. What's for lunch? <laughs> Miss Isis' kitchen. Miss Isis' kitchen was a gathering point. It was serious, man. Food is a very big part of our life. Was a very big part of our life. Is a very big part of our life. What was he like as a teacher? Oh, God, he was... Listen, when I started really having problems with my body and wondering if I'm going to be able to dance again, Barry Moncrief's floor class is the boom. All right? Everything else before that, yes, was great. The floor class, you should have patented it and made videos and sell. What, what, what was it that was so exceptional about the floor class? Well, he used everything. His Graham, you know, his Graham experience, the NDTC experience. I mean, we were exposed to so many wonderful teachers. Eduardo Rivera being also very key for me. But Barry's floor class, when I didn't think I could do anything, set me up. You know, you speak of his, um, his Graham experience. Uh, and, and, you know, some people know that he went to the United States of America and uh, Martha Graham Contemporary School of Dance was where, where he's headed. Yeah. And he actually performed with other companies in the United States of America. I had the privilege of interviewing him. I recorded the interview on May 8, 2018 for Profile. Shall I tell you? It was not an easy task to interview <laughs> Yeah, because he's so humble. It's a me. so much. I think so. No, Faye, please. I mean, I said, Barry, you have something important to share. You know, and that, I'm, I have my notes here. I took about so many pages of notes and, you know, things, the lead roles in dances, Two Drums of Babylon, Tribute to Cliff, Court of Jar, The Crossing, Children of Messiah, Nye, Woman of Destiny, and, and I could go on and on. But I'm certain that some of the other um, speakers this evening will address that. One final comment about Barmon Creep Elaine that just you don't want to finish your little segment without saying. What would that be? 
Oh gosh, I love him so much. He really is the most giving person ever, ever we are ever going to meet. Very kind good. and gentle and strong. Indeed. Kind and gentle and strong. A real man. Let me thank you for that, Elaine Grant, member of the National Dance Theatre Company. And she says that Barry Moncrief was like an older brother, you know, before she became uh, a friend in the early days. Could I just very quickly speak about his sister, Barbara, Bra Barbara Smith. When I spoke with her, she said, oh, he's a wonderful brother, a very kind person. Every single smuddy me talk to talk about Barry's kindness. And she says um, she's never seen anybody with kindness like that before. And she says, my, no, this my love, he was my date. Whenever I had to go anywhere, he was my date. And he would say, make sure you dress up. <laughs> uh, so there you go. She says um, they were close in terms of age. So they had a, a, another little special thing there. But thank you, Helene. Don't go anywhere because, you know, and remember, if you're just joining us and you have questions or comments, please put them in the chat and we hope to get to them in the final 15 minutes of the hour. Now. Hilary Phillips, I'm going for a piece of document I find here. Hilary Phillips, I, I think I got close to knowing you and uh, um, meeting you and working with you because of Pulse Grooming and Modeling School and the work that you and Kingsley Cooper did and then the others you drafted in to assist you with this work. And just going through my preparation, I came across this little brochure uh, for the Pulse Modeling School, Grooming and Modeling School, and there used to be at 3 Arden Road. And guess who is the head coordinator for male training? Barry Moncrief. Mr. Moncrief has been teaching at Pulse for the last three years. He has trained contestants for the Mr. Maker Fashion Model Pageant and also teaches in both the grooming and modeling programs. And it goes on to list some of his credentials. Hilary, did you, you are a dancer. Uh, how did you meet Barry and how did your friendship start? Hilary, you turn your mic on. Yes, I met him at the Jamaica School of Dance. That's where we met and I was, I was in awe of the beautiful articulated feet and the incredible dancer that he was. And we at the, as students at the Jamaica School of Dance had three fantastic teachers. We had Barry Moncrief, Bert Rose, and Patsy Ricketts. And when you came as a product out of those three, there were others because Barbara Rack was fantastic too, but we didn't, I, I didn't interface with her as much. But when Barry and Patsy were finished with getting your hip turned out and your point in the proper way, then Bert Rose would ensure that you would perform to the back of the house. So between ah. the three of them, you were destined to be friends of all three. But Barry just took me under his wings. I don't know, it was just a special attraction. And we became friends from day one, simply from day one. As a, he was a teacher and very shortly thereafter a friend and we have been friends from then. Let us talk and then, and then of course, well, then, of course, it segued into Pulse that started in 1980, and he was one of the first. At that time, I was one of four leading male models in Jamaica. So he was, of course, commanding the stage with his elegant self, and he was just looking beautiful, and he had such a sense of style. So if a designer put him in an outfit, Barry would have the handkerchief and the the shoes and if necessary the hat but he would just top off the whole outfit and look like just Barry. Earlier on I mentioned that Pam would create his designs. How did he start designing for fashion shows and for, for Pulse and for NDTC? Do you recall the beginning? Well I think I think he segued from the modeling into the fashion designing because at first he was a model and then he was grooming and he was sort of being a part of the shows that we were doing but at that time he wasn't a designer yet so i think it was another segue he just moved right in from the modeling and realized that he had so much creativity in him and wanted to put his clothes on the ramp and he had that red black and white palette that was just so extraordinary and what was so beautiful about it is that barry appreciated that those colors could be in a sports outfit with your, just your shorts and your t-shirt and it could go right up to black tie vent. So when he put That's on red, a show- Red, black and white. Red, black and white, yes. And so he, when he put on a show, 
he would move through those colors. Sometimes just uh, the basic one color with a touch of one or a touch of the other two. And it was really very powerful and very, very much Barry because it was distinctive, it was classic and it was elegant. I know you would have seen several designs for um, posts of uh, fashion model shows and other shows and NDTC um, dances, etc. But is there a particular design that has just stood out for you that it just rocks you every time, every time you think of it? There are so many because he, 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 he so quickly became one of our star designers that he used to open and close the shows. So to do that, he would have a strong, strong piece to open and a strong piece to close. So I he, I the Pulse fashion model, uh, the Pulse yes. fashion shows. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking about our fashion shows, Caribbean Fashion Week. He, was, he yeah. became one of the Caribbean master designers. He got awards repeatedly. He was selected to take his designs to Brussels, to Washington. I think he even went with a trip to Washington. I mean, he, he just, as, as soon as he decided he was going to put his clothes on, on the stage, then they became, you know, so, so powerful. I remember one in particular, which he, in, in, in keeping with the kindness he gave me, because it was worn by Nicky Russell, and it was this fabulous black skirt, which had a sort of tool underneath. And of course, in, in every which, and had a big red, that was when I had a waist. So it had this big red belt, and then this tiny little white top. So you had all the black and white with the red. It was just fantastic. And I remember saying to him, Wow, Barry, that's such a beautiful outfit. And he said, you want it. It's <laughs> usual story with Barry. And I have it still. I can't wear the red belt or anything, but I, <laughs> I keep it. Just you know, because it's from Barry. <laughs> yes, and you know, I, I, I just see him and Pam working, him designing, and they're both creating and, and modifying. And oh, it was just amazing. And you know, the entire family, and the family who are here, please don't blush out. We're speaking the truth. I am, and I know everybody. It's just a kind family. It's just a family with a kind of heart that it's, it's, it's above and beyond. You know what I mean? Before I let you go, Hillary Phillips, and we're speaking to you in your capacity uh, as a family with NDTC and not in your legal capacity. So I'm not disrespecting you by not putting on the other things. But you are Barry's travel partner. What kind of travel <laughs> partner was he? But he was just like how Barry is. He was, he was very caring, looking out for you, making sure everything was fine. He, he's, he's just that sort of person. And then uh, coupled with it, it's hardly ever that you would find somebody who's prepared to browse for hours in a clothing store, hours in a shoe store, hours in, I mean, you know, he'll go to plays, he will go to shows, he will just um, jewelry store, everything. He'll just spend hours with you. And, and, and of course, he's not only spending the hours with you because you have that fabulous artistic um, In eye. I, so therefore, he's going to be able to help you take away from the various countries that we went to the, the proper and right thing with the proper price because he wasn't going to allow you to do any foolishness either. But before you finish with me, I just want to say, not only was he this beautiful, wonderful person that everybody speaks about and how wonderful kind he was, but he had the gift of friendship. He had the gift of friendship and he was my dear, dear friend for the decades that we were friends together. When I, I spoke about it at his um, Thanksgiving service, he gave me a fridge magnet which said, friends are the family we choose for ourselves. And that, and he, that meant a lot to him. And he really displayed it. You know, he was, he was a friend who gave, he was a friend who was kind, he was a friend who was caring, he was a friend who knew how to pick up the phone when he thought maybe you are just having a not too good time or you're working too hard and would make you feel good about everything. I, I can't, it's just hard to think of a, of, a, of a more fabulous human being, really. Thank you so much, Hilary Phillips, well said. Well, the NDTC is known for its dances and choreography. It's known for its singing with the NDTC singers, and it's known for its powerful instrumentalists. It is my pleasure now to introduce Henry Miller, Master Drummer Master Henry, how are you? Is, turn on your mic, Henry. I am very well, thank you, how are thank you? you? I'm good, thanks. So here you are, thank you for joining us. I know that this is very special for everyone who has joined here. Now, Uncle Barry's classes, because you had to drum for classes as well as performances, what was it like accompanying him over the many years that he taught at the School of Dance and with the National Dance Theatre Company? Well, playing for Barry's classes at the school and at the company, it has always been fun. Great 
always great classes. What, what specifically, uh, what quality would you say he brought to the classes and incorporated what you had to do? How did he blend them together? Well, um, the way in which he explained the class, it has always been good. It's very easy to follow. He worked, and like the NDTC and other choreographers, worked with many of the Jamaican folk forms. And he would teach them in class, and of course, many of them would be exhibited in dances of the National Dance Theatre Company. Talk about a folk form that you worked with, and with for NDTC, and what that meant to you. Well, um, Brookings and Kumina come to mind, but I honestly think that Kumina was his number one. Why do you think so? Well, when those drums start to play, you see Mr. Monpreet started to move, you know, it's something else, you know. <laughs> when you say something else, what do you mean? Well, he's, uh, he, moves, he moves so freely. Effortlessly, I agree. Well, shall I tell you something? I think you both complimented each other. He was moving and you were drumming. What, 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 what happens to your body when you're going through that process? Because you're supporting him as a dancer and he's feeding from you as a drummer. What y'all go through at that time? Well, at, at that time, you know, to be honest with you, is that um, the drum, drummers usually feed off dancers and dancers really um, feed off drummers. So it's, it's a two-way thing. Yeah, you support each other indeed. You would have been able to observe him with the, the relationships he had with his students and with other members of faculty like yourself and the, the members of the National Dance Theatre Company, dancers, singers, musicians. What kind of relationships did he have and what struck you about him and how he conducted those relationships? Well, the relationship with dancers, musicians, everyone is always good because Barry is always a respectable person and he's very respectful, so everyone gets along with him great. You ever see him get upset yet? Well, to be, to be honest with you, I have seen him gotten upset one time and at that point you could say, he was really, really upset. He was angry. So what about your takeaway yourself? <laughs> well, no, it wasn't me, you know. He was not upset with me. <laughs> no, I didn't think it was you, but I just wondered if he got so upset that he just, excuse me, sir, no, what no, no, this? no, 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 no. <laughs> when you reflect on Barry Moncrief, Uncle Barry, as we call him, <clears throat> where did you travel with him at the National Dance Theatre Company? And just tell us about those experiences. Well, um, I have traveled many times with Mr. Moncrief, and to name some of the places that we have gone together, um, places like London, Finland, the USA, Hong Kong, many, many places. Finland, that's an unusual, you know, you don't hear Jamaican groups going to places like Finland too frequently or at all. What was that experience like? Very, very good. I mean, from um, when we were, we were in Helsinki before we got to um, Copia, and that's where I, I was and saw a lot of um, a lot of things about the athletes, the earlier part of Jamaica, people like Arthur Wint and George Road and those places. Oh, you saw information there about them because they would oh, okay, oh, all right, got you. So you went there and learned about Jamaica. <laughs> Not really, I knew about them, you know, but, yeah, I, but I you, saw you, a lot. You learned that they had put Jamaica on a pedestal over right. there. Yes. Right. Is there one thing you want to share with us about Uncle Barry that you just Uncle shouldn't... Barry was someone that I really, really respect. And one of the things that really um, drew me closer to Mr. Moncrief was the respect that he really had for people. It was really, really great knowing him. You know, I'm talking to you, Mas Henry, but I'm hearing the <laughs> drums in my head. That is what I hear him. <laughs> So thank you so much. Don't go away because um, okay. questions might come that you might have to uh, help us answer. And now I think we have the final presenter as we the, for the performance as we honor Barry Moncrief, Uncle Barry, and that's Sandra Phillips. Sandra danced with the NDTC company, and you can't be with part of a group with Barry Moncrief and not be part, become friends with him. But when did your friendship, or let me put that differently, when did the association with Barry Moncrief begin, Sandra Phillips? Do you know, Faye, um, and thank you for allowing me this opportunity uh, to be with my NDTC family. I always appreciate that. Um, 
But uh, I actually met Barry when I was nine years old. Mm -hmm. Nine? Nine years old. <laughs> um, my father was a photographer. Um, when he was not being a doctor, he was a photographer. And he took a lot of pictures of the NDTC. And he took me with him. I was I carried his camera bag. I helped him change a film. I, I did a errands. And that was my first exposure. And uh, I can still remember seeing, um, seeing Barry and Yvonne da Costa um, ballad for a lady rehearsing in the rehearsal room, um, which is now the Little Little Theater. Um, uh, the, the, over the years, the Little Theater kind of became a home for everybody. Yes, indeed. And, and I would have to say that without be, being blood related, um, Barry is a part of my DNA. Uh, much of my upbringing, um, the non-parental upbringing was done by the NDTC. Uh, people like Rex and Barry and Bertie and Patsy and Dorothy Fraser, Barbara Requa. Uh, these were all people who were very, very influential in my formative years. And um, I have often said that I have learned as much about being a professional from being a dancer or, or than I learned at law school, for instance, as much as you know, um, there are certain things, certain inherent traits that you bring with you to whatever you do. That kind of discipline, you that, know. That kind of discipline that I would like forever time. grateful to people like Barry and NDTC for inculcating into my DNA. When did you join the NDTC and uh, he, what was his role then? Was he a principal dancer? Yes, um, I joined the NDTC. I got my invitation to join in 1977. Uh, just before my 17th birthday, I was 16 years old. Uh, <laughs> it was one of the highlights of my life. It still is. I, I had the good fortune of performing a number of seminal works with Barry. Tribute to Cliff, Mr. Criola, Crossing, The Gospel According to, Islands, Wonder Love and Ways, Back to Back, Viva Back, King Must Die, Celebrations, Glory Road, Jubilate, all of these things I danced with Barry. Um, Dialogue for Three, um, The Crossing, of course. Uh, in fact, behind me, there's a collage of me and Noel Chodkan and Barry dancing Dialogue for Three. Um, it's one of my precious possessions. Um, Would you consider him a sounding board for decisions you had to make? I would consider him a sounding board, but not an obvious one. Ah, that's interesting. That's interesting. Way of transmitting his messages in a way that were easily received by the recipient. So I'm not the kind of person that you want to drum something into face to face because I don't really receive instruction well that way. <laughs> <laughs> Barry had a way of, of um, saying it in the way that you needed to receive it. Very much like how Martin gave the <laughs> illustration of the rum punch. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let him know in a kind of way without saying, this is not for you at your age. Without saying those words, he still got the message across. Everybody. So, that kind of, Barry was, the, the thing I want is to, to describe Barry. Barry, it might sound like an oxymoron, but majestic understatement. Mm -hmm. that, he was understated and majestic at the same time. Now, that is not an easy combination. I connect with that. I agree with you. Yeah, that was bad. Everybody speaks about his kindness. Can you tell us of any kindness that you experienced from Barry that was unusual, unique, different? I can. As a matter of fact, when you were asking Hillary about her favorite Moncrief design, I could have told you faith. And my favorite Moncrief design is my wedding dress. Talk to us, girl. Hold it. <laughs> and if you look at this picture, if I hold it steady, you will see pearls around my neck. Those yes. are the pearls of Barry's mother, her pearl necklace that he took off and sewed onto my wedding dress for my wedding day. I kid you not. You see, 
Judy and Martin, this is the generosity. I had always say wanted a Moncrief original. But when I was getting married, I had just finished my LLB. I hadn't started Norman Man yet. Um, so I was a student. Um, my husband was a lecturer in the Department of Government, believe it or not. So money was tight. But I did want a Moncrief original <laughs> as my wedding dress. And I was determined to make the budget stretch. And I went to Barry and I said, Barry, I have, don't worry, I have put something aside and I would like you to, to design my wedding dress for me. Barry took me in. It was Barry and his mother and Pam. And Barry did the design and Pam and his mother did the construction down to taking off the pearls and stringing them around. The headdress was designed by Barry. Even the little things around my head here, these little things here on either side, that holy veil in place were crafted by Barry. <laughs> and when he had finished the wedding dress and asked me if I was happy with it, I said I was over the moon. And as time came to pay him, and he said, this is my gift to you. Enjoy. Not a red cent did he charge me for that dress. I still have the dress today. Um, it's not been a story. My story. That's my story about, that's a kind of general. But then Barry was like in local parentis. He was constantly, um, as I said, I knew him from I was nine years old. I, I grew through adolescence into adulthood. Mm -hmm. Like Barry. In I have one final question to ask you before we, I, I know um, we have an administrator who's perhaps looking at, at questions and comments at this time that uh, perhaps we'll address. But the question is, I hear about his legendary warm-ups. Would you like to tell me about that? <laughs> Did you experience any of that? Well, let me tell you something about Barry's warm-up. Once you got it pat, it became part of your muscle memory because it was so efficient and it was so well-structured and it was designed to get you ready to perform. So it would start slow, sometimes on the floor, occasionally you'd start at the bar. But wherever he started, it was a routine that um, most of us, Alain will tell you, we, we could do it in our sleep because it, it became muscle memory. Now the importance of something um, being done via muscle memory is that it frees up your brain to do other things while you're doing the warm up. So for instance, Faye, if it is that you are doing a class for development, you know, for your, your, your artistic development sake, then if you, are, if you are doing it with muscle memory, you are allowed the space in your brain to concentrate on things like perfecting your alignment and getting it right without having to think about the sequence because your muscles are automatically doing the sequence. Now, if you're doing it for a, a performance, then because you're, you're, you're going on muscle memory, your brain is freed up to get yourself psychologically attuned to the task at hand. So you are able, while warming up, to be having your head in the role that you are going to do next. So you could be using the warm-up to warm up your body physically, but you're also, um, because the warm-up is so much a part of you and something that you do so um, routinely, you are able to, at the same time, focus on the the opening number or the number after that, or whichever number you want to focus on. You're right? ready to go. When Barry's finished, you're ready to go. You're ready to go. As, as a, you don't walk off the street onto the stage. You always have to, as you know, you're a performer yourself. And as Rex would always say, you would have to get yourself psychologically attuned to the task at hand. Indeed. Thank you, Sandra Phillips. Now we have the, maybe 15 minutes. Yes, we've managed this time well uh, for comments. And this is where our administrator will have to assist me here. Uh, I hope you're hearing me, Marlon, uh, to share comments that may have come in because I'm, I don't have them at my end of, of the platform. Yes, he says, I'm hearing you. Great. So if there is anything you want to share, and while we're doing that, uh, any comments that have come in, any questions that have come in while we're doing that, uh, he's going 
we send them right away. Let me ask um, the niece and the nephew who listened through this, Judy and Martin, uh, you heard much of this you would have heard before, but some of it you may not have heard. Um, yes, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a message, my brother. Uh, would you like to, uh, 30 seconds from either each of you on what you've heard? Um, I think that a lot of the theme, it's a common theme, you know? Um, I would have heard a lot of things already. Like I knew when Elaine moved in with Uncle Barry, you know, I know about Hillary and Fultz in the early days, but as an usher then too, putting all the numbers on the back of the seats, you know, all because of Uncle Barry. So um, a lot of it is exactly, he is exactly as he appeared to be. There was no hidden part of his personality. None at all. No. Martin in Abu Dhabi. It's after yeah. three o'clock there now, heading for 3.30 in the morning. 3.45, no, I, I think um, Judy hit the nail on the head. Um, you hear some things like what Sandra said about the wedding dress. You know, you, you know that he is this person, but hearing it from other people who are family but not blood family, it, um, it really, really touches you, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, let me just share something here. Um, we want to, uh, this is respect and thanks for decades of friendship to Barry and those who have gone and to Bertie and those who carry on. His quiet dignity is with us always. And I pray that those who benefited from his teaching and his words of encouragement will pass it on to the next generation and preserve his memory thus. And it ends with, we miss you. All right. The, there are others coming in. Barry was so tender and caring to children. My children were always the last to leave dance classes. He would care for them, feed them, maybe curry goat, and never left them out of his sight until I came from work. And this is Sonia Dawn Davidson. Um, uh, um, Faye, just want to add to that. Yes. Um, Miss Isis Kitchen, many a time you would say, do not run up my bill there. When they come from school, four days a week at school and dance, and you're going to eat your snack, and then you're going to eat again before we're leaving at seven in the night. So um, when, when um, Alain spoke about Isis Kitchen, I was just like, yes, yes, yes. That was very <laughs> much All right. Only when you drink from the river of silence shall you indeed sing. And when you have reached the mountain top, then you shall begin to climb. And when the earth shall claim your limbs, then you shall then shall you truly dance, Khalil Gibran, the prophet. And this is from Joseph Emmanuel. Oh, wow. Um, all of those persons taught us so much, poise and how to be a consummate professional. Pat Shako, I hope I got that name correct. Are you identifying with any of these people? I see Martin nodding. Yes. And of course, uh, Sonia Dawn Davidson, Dr. Davidson, I believe this person is. Yes. Uh, let me see. Do you have anything else uh, coming up? Um, we might have some more coming. But let me ask, um, uh, let me see, Alain, if you can just unmute your mic and out of this discussion that has come, what are you going away with at the end of today? <laughs> hey, it's going to take me, I don't know, COVID has me staying in another six months to still try to process my NDTC life. That includes Barry's passing. Indeed. Because my, my family left one by one in the 70s and I accrued and I, I, I got another family. School of Dance, NDTC, and the Sutherlands. So, I mean, you know, I really, 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 really have to say how blessed and privileged I am feeling this year. All right, and let me just carry on with some other comments. Audrey Nemhard, I think, says his sense of humor in the classes and then Hilary Marsh, love that man so very much, Lord. I see Martin smiling. Martin, when you sit here, Hilary Marsh, you know the person. The name doesn't ring a bell, but you're putting me on the spot now. I could be getting in trouble. <laughs> Just because I saw his smile. But then again, it is, I love that man so much. Because so many people say that. Let me tell you something. I didn't want to inject myself into this thing until near the end. But me not making this thing done, I'm not telling you how Barry made me feel super special on a number of occasions. As an actress, just, just a comment when you'd come to the play and the support, but he, me take me apart at NDTC. 
because outside of supporting the NBTC, I'm not missing any performances. I, and that's how I've been from, I was at the a foundation member of the School of Drama, which was under the auspices of the Little Theatre Movement, having classes there and watching Professor Rex, there because of Barry and Bertie and all of them. But when he invited me to read poetry at uh, the, the Easter Sunday morning performance, that for me was a big, big thing because hello, me catch in a performance with NDTC, you know what that meant to me? And I did that three times. That meant everything. All right, another one here. Tom Price, thank you for this. Nothing but love for Mr. Moncrief. Mercy, Tom Price. And so um, let me bring, uh, yes, go right you in. Mentioned, here you mentioned dramas. Oh, you mentioned I mean, dramas. You mentioned drama school a, a while ago. We cannot leave this without mentioning that Mr. Moncrief is the drama school dance teacher of all time. Serious business with drama students and Barry Moncrief. Serious. And this, and this is at the School of Drama, the Edna Manley College uh, for the Business Performing Arts. Yeah. Yeah. And I've heard people talk about Peter. that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I would like people to listen. No, no, he affected so many of those drama students. I'm telling you, man. Yes, yes. I mean, let me bring Hillary in. Yes, Hillary? Well, well, it's because I know that speaking about the man and how tented and you know, what a beautiful human being he was. But it's good for us to mention also he got so many awards because of his talent. You know, he had the Silver Musgrave Award, he got the yes. Commander of Distinction, he also yes. had, um, he got the Caribbean Master of Fashion Award, he got several fashion awards. He was uh, just, you know, he, it's, it's good to know he, he, he also was um, cognized. Let in me terms just, of the, the in addition to the awards, yeah. sorry, sorry to interrupt you, in addition to the awards, could we just also remind those of us who perhaps forget or didn't know that he worked with the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission and mm -hmm. he was um, the, di the mm -hmm. director of uh, for the cultural group for the blind. He worked with the cultural group for the blind. Mm -hmm. Not people remember that. You understand? Mm -hmm. <sighs> Um, Faye, just, yes, just to Judy, go right ahead. So what um, Hillary was saying, it was in his passing and in going through his the documentation and you were able to see how many awards he got even from just schools overseas that would write to say, you know, how they feel about him. I mean, it was just overwhelming. The level of so just mm -hmm. the information that we got. It was yes. overwhelming, you know, really. And, 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 and I have a, let me just share a comment before we get Hillary. Hold on, hold on one moment, Hillary. Let me just share this. Love. Who is, who is talking? Mm -hmm. Just one moment. Hillary, just hold one moment because I was trying to uh, put them. Claire Requa has just five words. A what at yam foot? <laughs> you hear that? A what at yam foot? But then there's this one, Marie Matmoreau. Greetings from Florida. Dr. Barry Moncrief was not only a superb dancer, he was also an exceptional dance teacher. He was my favorite dance teacher in the mid 70s. I met Barry when I was 15 years old. His exercises worked very well with developing my body. His instructions were sequential, and so it was easy to follow. He always counted, and that helped students. He would then increase the exercises as he saw our skills improve. Both Barry and Patsy Ricketts made an impact on me as a teenage dance student at the Jamaica School of Dance. As an adult singer, Barry got his sister, Pam, to make some of my gowns for my stage performances. I still have some of them. He also designed the stage for one of my concerts in Jamaica. I was in New York, let me just, yes, I was in New York about, about 1996, walking uh, in Flushing, Queens, New York, in deep, deep thought, when all of a sudden I saw this man walking towards me and we both had this sudden recognition. Uh, the light, Kissing the Boulevard light, uh, light up, we hugged and began to talk for about 30 minutes. I had to catch my plane, my train, RIP. And Dennis Francis Robinson, or, or to the singers, he would say, get the rice grains out of your throat. <laughs> get the rice grains out of your throat. And he, she says, this is Denise Francis Robinson, great remembering this awesome human being. Hillary, I interrupted you just now. Please go on. I'm not hearing you. Um, 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 on mute your mic, Hillary. Right, beautiful. Yes. Yes, yes. I was just saying that when uh, Judith was mentioning that he, in, in preparing for or looking through his papers, you'd have seen all of these various different places that he had taught. You'd also, everybody, such an outpouring wherever he taught, because like Vassal didn't want him to come back home. 
That's and right. everywhere that he went, it was the same sort of appreciation. You know, it, 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 so it's, it, 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 it's a sort, he's a sort of person that you'd have, a, you'd have this kind of conversation and you could have this kind of conversation anywhere else with seven other people knowing him and you're going to get the same sort of powerful remarks. Hello, I'm referring to my notes when I prepared for the interview I did for Pope. I don't know if Sam was in the Macy's Parade. Did you all know that? He was in yes, that was I in was in it place. with him. I was in it with him. <laughs> Talk Sandra. Talk Sandra. Yes. No man, we were at Macy's Day Parade. It was freezing cold. We did crossing. Um, we did the um, many rains to come uh, crossing. And we had, we had to wear shoes and go rehearse. The yes, minute. but one of the things, as you talk about his dry sense of humor, I remember a young upstart provisional dancer um, talking about the, the warm up before the show, coming and standing in front of all the dancers and saying, step aside, Barry, I'm taking the class this evening. And Barry turns around and says, and who said the circus was coming to town? <laughs> like all the Barry Shan. Please. <laughs> Positions, please. <laughs> <laughs> Look here, you know the first time he danced, what his costume was like? Well, him dance in a long drums. In first tights was a pair of long drums that were dyed black as a teenager. Yes, yes. And um, he tells that story. And I have to tell you, you know, he was in the cadet corps at St. Jago. But you don't know, huh? at that, that time in the, in the 70s, um, when the School of Dance and the School of Drama and the School of Music and the School of Art came together in what was then called the Cultural Training Center, which nowadays is Edna Manley College. That was such a special time. That's when I met people like Henry. And, um, <laughs> you know, the School of Music, the School of Drama, the School of... So when you say you felt like an NDTC member, that's, that's true. I'm telling you. I felt a you. part of each other's worlds. So many <laughs> people I know in the artistic community um, yes. came out of that whole experience. Shall you know? I tell you, um, Sandro, there today. when he told me about being in the cadets here, no? then I used to march with, with, with gun and rifle, you know. <laughs> I don't know how he can say, I can't say it like it. He said, I used to march with gun and rifle. And um, he, oh, he, worked at, he worked at the former workers' bank. Yeah, he was working in accounting. You say all Martin and do them. I forgot PM if all of them. Anyway, and, and let me just run. read two more. What is it, Martin? You used to run, you used to run 100 yes, yards. Yes, 100 meter. I have that, but I didn't want to flood you all. Yes, 100 meter. By the way, let me just quickly read um, a few more comments. Cheryl Ryman says, still watching, enjoying the memories. Audrey Nemhard, his, his warm up is the bomb. There you go. <laughs> All right, Henry, we're not here for you for a little while now. Um, you, have to, you, have to, you have to lick through with him there. Turn on your mic, turn on your mic. Talk to me now. You, have to, you can't come out of here. Uh, uh, you hey, hearing me? One, one, one moment, one moment, Elaine. Henry? Are you hearing me? Yes, man, hearing you now. Yeah, what were you saying? You've heard everything, and uh, it's been a wonderful evening of memories, but do you want to say anything further? Yeah, but one thing um, I have not heard, is that um, when Barry's teaching and it is about the progression and the ladies would be going across the stage to, to start and you hear him say, people, I want you to choose your partner wisely. And everybody just start to laugh. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I want people really something else, you know, <laughs> it was a great person. That's a gem. You remember anything else? Any other, other little things, Henry? <laughs> well, there are so many, there are so many, you know, there are so many of them, to be honest with you. Let me see if I can't remember anymore now. Well, let, um, let, the same thing I'll ask you about Kumina. Yeah, go ahead. When him usually say, um, like when, when the Kumina starts, him say, you can't keep everything else. When the drum starts playing, him, you can keep every, anything else and just give him just the play drums. Ah. It, yeah. it moves you, it moves you. Elaine, well, we, we are a little, we are now spot on, on the nose of seven, but I'm going to allow Elaine, and of course, my administrator will send me a little message if, he, if there's anything else, uh, any other messages that are coming, so I can know how to proceed. But Elaine, you wanted to say something. Please unmute your mic, my sister. 
On mute your mic, Elaine. On mute your mic. Because Henry, and I wanted to say that one of the things that um, Old Church, Henry is famous for cooking some serious ackee uh, on occasion and stew peas. I'm not, I, I don't know about, I won't, I don't remember the curry goat, but we used to cook, Barry, Henry used to cook stew peas and ackee for, for Barry in Ake. this last year. Serious Ake. manner. <laughs> and um, as a matter of fact, Pam told me that even while he, he was quite ill, he wanted his curry goat and she had to get it for him at least once a week. Man, loving food. <laughs> Let me just acknowledge, um, um, you know, I want to acknowledge the, his three sisters. I know we have niece and nephew here, but I just want to once again thank uh, Barbara Smith, Norma Hesick, and of course Pam for just sharing their little tidbits in, in terms of memories that I was able to just weave into the, I almost said program, almost said production. <laughs> Thank you both very much. Let me see if I have anything else. Yes. All right. So guess what? I'm going to wrap up now, but I'm going to give each of you about 10 seconds to make a final, final statement. We're going to go a little bit um, beyond seven, but just you have to make it tight. 10 seconds. Let me begin with uh, Judy. Okay. Make sure I, you put on the mic so, so I can compute quickly. Yes, ma'am. I know yours is on. Um, and Judy, I, properly, hang on, Judy, one more. Judy Benjamin is niece biological niece for Barry Moncrief, yes? I would like to thank the NETC for um, the tribute because I often think that when people have done so much in two generations, they're forgotten. You know, and that's, a, that's, a, that's something that I've been thinking about since his passing. You know, that in two, two generations, who is Barry Moncrief? You know, only the dancer will know. So I really appreciate the fact that NDTC has done the tribute so that um, there'll be a place where people will see who he was. The, the book is out and the, the, um, dance, the dance that we saw yesterday is out and I really appreciate it. And, and when I, you say the book is out, you better say what you mean by the book is out. Oh, there is a um, online book about him, about him that's out. Right. Right. And you can go on the NDTC YouTube channel and yes, see a number of the dances that he was lead dancer in. Yes. Thank you, Judy. I Let me see that. Yes. Elaine, Elaine Grant uh, was like a sister, a daughter, uh, uh, worked with him um, as a teacher and in the NDTC. Your 10 seconds, Elaine. My 10 seconds. One word, kindness. Kindness. Thank you. Kindness. Martin, Abu Dhabi, you need to go to your bed, man. It's four o'clock. It's after four <laughs> in the morning. As usual, if you put me after Judy, she says it before I do. Oh. Well, thank you very much to the NDTC, in particular, Marlon. Thank you very much for hosting this program. And it thank has been a pleasure. It's been really you. touching and a little bit educational also. Martin Sutherland, nephew to Barry Moncrief. Let me go now to Henry. Your last 10 seconds, Henry. Turn on your mic. Turn on your mic, Henry. Turn on your mic. Right, you're on. Yeah. Well, I just want to say that Mr. Moncrief was really a great and dear friend of mine. And may his soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you so very much. Sandro, Sandro Phillips. Hang on, turn on your mic, please, Sandro. Just I, flip your I mic feel I was truly blessed to have been allowed the opportunity to perform in Jamaica and around the world with Barry Moncrief. And I can truthfully say that after I had danced Crossing, Sitting in Limbo, Dialogue for Three, and Miss Creola with him, all my dance dreams had come true, every single one of them. <laughs> oh, thanks. And now, Madam Hilary Phillips. Would you like to put the, turn your mic on for us, please. Turn your mic on. Yes, I know. And just put the lid on this wonderful one hour and a few minutes. I would just like to say thank you, Barry, for the dance, for the fashion, for the creativity, for the friendship, for the beautiful person that you were. And you will just always be remembered. What good, my friend. Thank you so much. 
thanks to all our guests and those of you who joined the conversation, whether you made a comment or not, we appreciated the fact that you were there. Look to the NDTC YouTube channel and you can go back and look at it or you can tell someone who may not have seen it that it's there. To all our friends in Jamaica and across the world, thank you for just joining us live and for sharing with us your thoughts on Barry Moncrief. Uncle Barry. If you missed any portion, remember the YouTube channel is there. Remember that you'll see on the, on the NDTC YouTube channel also Barry Moncrief in performance. You don't want to miss that. And the book as well that you, uh, about him, that's there. Uh, subscribe, subscribe to the NDTC on all your social media platforms where they are, please. NDTC is on Facebook, it's on Twitter, it's on Instagram, it's on Tumblr. Oh yeah, they're not joking. Now next week, the 58th anniversary celebrations will continue and you can join us live for a conversation with Marjorie Wiley and members of the NDTC alum, hosted by Carole Reed. Now, Marjorie Wiley was the musical director for the NDTC for over four decades, so you can imagine what that discussion is going to be like. And they'll be discussing the development of the NDTC soundscape. And, they, and again, it'll start at six o'clock. You don't want to miss that. Six o'clock Jamaica time, all right? And again, it'll be on Facebook. Uh, mark a calendar and don't forget to join us and thank you before I go, he perhaps doesn't want me to say this, but I am going to say it. I want to thank Marlon Sims. The, um, yes, Marlon, you're in the background, the administrator for the group here this evening covering over in face, but also for ensuring that this happened. You heard family and the persons who are part of this discussion share their comments about how important it is that this was done. Marlon, you're doing a wonderful job. Please, I know you don't want me to say this, but keep going. And those of us who are around you will keep supporting you to ensure that the legacy lives on. Well, good everybody till next time. And tell them other one how they do.